Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today uh, we are going to discuss uh, a simple and a very important topic and that is the ComServe DR Backup. We are going to discuss the ComServe Disaster Recovery Backup. Okay, so I would like to start this topic with a scenario. Let's suppose you have a ComServe. Okay, there is a ComServe that you are using in your environment. Okay, and this ComServe has a SQL database. We know that ComServe uses a SQL database in the background to store all its metadata. Okay, and we know this ComServe is going to act as a commanding and controlling unit for your entire backup infrastructure. Every backup related operation is being controlled by this particular ComServe. Okay, now what happened is due to some XYZ reason, might be some ransomware attack or something happened to your ComServe, you lost this particular ComServe, like ComServe is gone. Though the other component like which are there might be you, ha you are having the media agent, okay, and uh, you have a libraries available where all the backups are written, each and everything is available, it's just your ComServe that is gone, okay. Now in that case, you will be required to build your ComServe again. Now if you need to build your ComServe, what you're gonna do is you will take a server, okay so on that particular server you will install the os now once you install the os on it you are going to install uh, the uh, uh, comsub package on it now as soon as you install the comsub package on the new server okay uh, once you install the uh, com server package on the new server a sql database will be created on this particular com server as well the new com server that you have okay let me say it's a new com server that we are building but guys this sql database which has been created it will be a new sql database that will be created along with that it will be blank okay what what i mean by blank is like when this com server installation is done if you will log in inside the gui Okay, if you will log in inside the console console of this particular com server, you will see nothing inside that particular console. Like you will not be able to see what all policies you have created, what all clients you are backing up, what all uh, uh, backups you have taken, what all libraries you have configured, what all media agent you have configured. You will able to uh, will not be able to see anything inside your console. The reason being is that the SQL database that has been created is a new SQL database. So you will not be able to manage your old backup infrastructure. You will not be able to perform the restoration and all. Now that's a problem. Okay. If you're not able to access anything your, uh, from your old backup infrastructure. Now, in order to get that information, I need to have this SQL database, the SQL database, the old SQL database that I was, uh, uh, you know, having. Uh, this particular SQL database I need to have on the new com server so that I can see all the old detail because all the metadata was saved inside this particular SQL database. So guys, in order to make sure that I'm able to recover my com server, in that case, what you need to be, uh, uh, what you need to make sure is that you have this SQL database available, okay? at any given point of time. So what we do is we back up this particular SQL database. We back up this particular SQL database on some location. Okay. And what we are going to do is we once we have taken a backup of this particular SQL database. So once your com serve is gone and you're trying to build a new com serve. So once the com serve package has been installed on the new server, you will perform the restoration of that particular SQL database inside this particular new SQL. So you will be performing the DR restore. Now that this is how uh, important your SQL database is. In short, you need to make sure that the SQL database of your com serve, you're backing up the SQL database of your com serve on a daily basis. Now the backup of the SQL database of your com serve is being referred as the DR backup in com world. We call it as a DR backup. So today we are going to discuss this process of DR backup. We are going to discuss that how com world is, uh, you know, uh, being taking up the DR backups, what all options are available inside this particular DR backups. Now guys, by default, 
if I say income volt daily at 10 a.m. Okay, there is a backup called DR backup is running. Okay, now this DR backup is responsible for backing up the SQL database of your ComSub. Your ComSub is using SQL database uh, databases in the background okay so all those databases which has been required to recover your comps of in case of disaster all those particular database will be backed up by this dr backup which is running by default at 10 a.m now we are going to discuss the process of this particular dr backup first so let's suppose this is a comps of that you have for which you are trying to take the dr backup now it has a sql database on it now, we know that the backup of this particular uh, comps of uh, DR backups will be running at uh, 10 a.m. daily in the morning. So at the 10 a.m. when the DR backup will be initiated, guys, what will happen? First of all, what will be done? The location of your installation directory of your comps of. Okay. So whatever is the installation directory for your comps of. So I would say installation directory slash inside that one there will be a folder called content store and inside that content store okay what will happen there is a folder which is getting created with the name comps of dr okay so what will happen when the dr backup will be initiated at 10 am these particular dr backups this dr backup first of all it will stage it will stage the sql database backup inside this particular location okay on the installation directory of your comps of packages inside the content store folder there will be one more folder that will be created with the name comps of dr so your sql database backup will be staged temporarily or inside this particular folder so remember that guys the whatever is the size of your sql databases let's suppose if it has a size of 100 gb something like this okay so you should have the free space equivalent to 100 gb available all the time on the installation directory of your particular comps up so that your sql database can be staged now many of the time let me let me show you that particular location as well so what happened is if you go to this particular server okay in this one if i go to the installation directory okay in the install we know that installation directory for the console will be inside c program files com vault uh, content store and in the content store there is a folder which is coming up with the name comps of dr so this is a location this is a folder inside which the dr backup will be staged temporarily so simply means inside this particular c drive where the installation has been done on that particular installation drive you should have always free space available equivalent to the size of your sql database now many of the time that can be a problem okay many times that can be a problem why it can be a problem because we might not having that much of free space available on this particular by default so your dr backup might get failed so guys you can change this staging location the whatever the staging location is there the default staging location can be changed on your comsub and how you can change that you can simply go inside the console console you can right click on the comsub name you can go to the properties in the properties you can go to the additional setting okay and in the additional setting there is something called you can add a key with the name er staging something like this you can see it's coming up er staging directory you can select this particular key and over here in the value you can define the location where you want to stage the dr backup you can define that location over here okay so this is the way how you can change the staging location for your dr backup if you want to change it okay now continuing the dr backup will be staged inside your installation directory inside the comps of dr folder okay now what happened is guys your dr backup is consist of two parts or i would say two phases the first phase when the dr backup is between zero percent to fifty percent it is called as the export phase 
we call it as the export phase. Now, for the export phase, what will happen? The DR backup that was staged temporarily on your installation directory on the comps of DR folder, what will happen? The copy of that DR backup will be created on the location, okay, on some export location. And what will be that location? It can be a local path or it can be a network path, UNC path. And that particular path will be defined by you as a backup admin. As a backup admin, you will define the location where the DR backup should be kept during the export phase. So your DR backup will be copied from the staging location to the location that you have defined. And when you define this location, you define this location when you are actually doing the comps of installation okay now once you have done the comps of installation if you want you can change that location if you want okay at any given point of time so what you can do is you if you go inside the comps of you can simply go under the control panel tab on the home under the toolbar home you can go to the control panel in the control panel you see a option of dr backup now once you click on the dr backup there is a tab selected with the name export setting and there are two sections one is called export setting section. In the export setting se section, you can see the location of your DR backup, which is a local drive. If you want, you can even change it to some network share. So whatever location you want, you can simply click on browse and you can define the location over there. If you select network share, you have to define the username and password to access that network share that you can define over here in the under the change. So as if now this is a location where I'm keeping the DR backup, I can change it to anything that I want. So I can simply select any other uh, uh, location. So I'm changing it to the DR backup folder inside the D drive. So we'll just click on OK. You can see that uh, it's getting updated and you can simply click on OK. Now, if you again click on the DR backup, you can see the location has been changed. So you can control the location of this export phase where this particular DR backup should be kept. Now, the DR once the DR backup is there between 0 to 50%, the copy from your staging location has been created on the location of your choice. Now, once that has been done, after that from 50% to 100%, we call it as the backup phase. Okay, now in this backup phase, what will happen? The copy of your DR backup will be written to one of your library that you have configured in your environment. It can be a disk library, it can be a tape library, or it can even be a cloud library. So whatever the library that you have configured to one of the library, your DR backup will be sent to one of your library. Okay. Now guys, in this Commvault, if I want to write down anything inside the library, in any of my library, if I want to write down any data inside my disk library, okay, or in my tape library, or inside my cloud library, I need some storage policy, okay? Nothing can be written without the storage policy. So guys, what will happen? As soon as you configure one media agent and one library in your newly set up environment, automatically there will be a storage policy that will be created with the name comms of DR. Okay, a storage policy will be created. Let me show you that one. We have that particular storage policy automatically getting created in this environment as well. You can see this one, the comms of DR, this yellow lightning sign. Okay, you can see type is a disaster recovery backup. So there is a storage policy with the name comms of DR that will be automatically created. Okay, and this particular policy will be responsible for writing down the data to your library now let's suppose if you have 10 15 libraries then to which particular library the dr backup will be written to so you can see in my infrastructure if i show you in this infrastructure i have multiple libraries like dl1 dl2 dl3 but if you will see comms of dr it is writing down my backups to the dl1 library why it has picked up dl1 out of dl1 dl2 and dl3 because dl1 was a very first library that was configured in my environment so commvault by default 
will pick up the library, the very first library that you configure in your Comcel console. So whatever the library that you have configured, the first library that will be picked up by your Comsoft DR storage policy for your DR backup. So DR backup will be written inside the DL1. You can change it later on. The normal way we change the data path inside this storage policy, we can change this particular library as well later on if we want. So your DR backup will be written to the first library that you have configured in your environment by default. Now, once this DR backup is done, your like it reaches 200%, your DR backup will be marked as completed. Okay. Now, guys, in this particular DR backup, there's a few things that I want to discuss. On this location, let me name this export location as one and the location two. Let me define this one as a location two for your DR backup and location one for your DR backup. Now, for the location one, okay. The data by default will be retained for five copies. How many for how many days the DR backup will be there on the export phase location? It will be the latest five copies. What do you mean by the latest five copies guys? As soon as the sixth copy will be created, the first copy will be deleted. Okay, so retention is not in terms of days. It's in the terms of number of copies you want to maintain. So at any given point of time, Commvault will by default maintain the five copies. Okay. On this particular location, if you want, you can change this particular retention and how you can do that. Again, you can go to the home control panel and the DR backup option. And over here, you can see it says the number of full metadata backup to be retained during the export phase setting is the five by default. It is going to keep the five copies. So you can modify this number you can increase this number or you can decrease this number but accordingly you require a space on that particular location okay so it is by default going to keep the five copies on this location now what about the retention on your library now the retention on your library okay if i talk about you can see if i go to the comms of dr primary you can see the retention is being shown as 15 days and 15 cycles by default. So by default, it is keeping up the 15 days and 15 cycle. But then there is a, some extended retention which has been marked like the last full backup of the week will be marked for 90 days retention and the last full of the month, it will be marked for 180 days. But general retention is 15 days and 15 cycles. Now, this is about your DR backup, but the question comes up. Can I create more copies of this particular DR backup? So to answer that particular question, yes, you can create more copies of your DR backup if you want. And those copies can be created during the export phase setting only. Okay. You can create a second copy, sorry, a third copy. Okay on the Commvault cloud storage location. Okay. I can say the third copy you can create Commvault, which is optional. So you can create Commvault. You can create a copy on Commvault cloud service. So what happened is guys, Commvault is providing you a storage on the Microsoft Azure. Okay. Microsoft blob storage. Commvault uses a Microsoft blob storage where it is providing you a free of course space storage space where you can keep your DR backup. So let's suppose if your Comserve or your entire on premise is being attacked by the ransomware. So you have lost even the DR backup, which was written on the location one due to some reason, but your DR backups will be always safe on the location number three because it has been sent into the cloud. It is also going to keep, it's not like you can uh, control the, you can keep n number of copies. It will be just five copies that you can latest five copies that you can maintain on the Commvault cloud service. Okay. Now in order to use this option, how you can enable this option or copy. So you will again go to the control panel, DR backup, and there is an option coming up with the name upload backup metadata to the Commvault cloud. But guys, it's not like anyone can use this option. When I say anyone, yes, it's a free of cost, but there are few prerequisites that you need to complete if you want to uh, use this option. And what are those prerequisites? The first prerequisite is that you should register this comser with this Commvault cloud service. 
your comsub should be registered and how it will be registered for that one you can click on this toolbar you can click on getting started and in the getting started there is something called initial setup and in that one there is something called initial console configuration if you click on that one there is a tab coming up with the name register product okay if you click on this register product over here you have to put your email address and the password if you are already registered if you already have an account on the convert cloud storage if not then you have to select this option of create new account. You have to provide your uh, first name, last name, email address, password, confirm password, your company name and phone number and your Comso will be registered with the Commvault Cloud. Okay. Once that has been registered, the second prerequisite that you need to complete in order to use that particular free, st uh, free storage, you need to configure the cloud metrics reporting as well. Okay. If you click on that one, it's been selected, configured automatically. Okay, so this cloud metrics reporting also need to be configured over here. The few settings, few clients data that you can want to include in that one that you can do it, but you need to uh, uh, configure this cloud metrics reporting. So these are the two options that you need to set it up or you need to configure if you want to use this option of backup metadata to the Commvault cloud. So you can send the third copy to the Commvault cloud service. So remember that Commvault uses the Azure uh, blob storage. Okay. And it's a uh, RAGRS, uh, uh, like a global redundant uh, storage it uses. Okay. Read access uh, global redundant storage that uh, Commvault uses in the uh, background on the Azure blob storage. Okay. So this is the third copy that you can uh, create. Now there is one more copy optional copy that you can create and that is the copy number four under the export phase only. Okay. And that particular copy is you can send your DR backups to your any of your cloud library that you have configured. If there is any cloud library that you have configured inside your libraries, you can even select that particular uh, library over here in the list. It's not coming up because I don't have any cloud library configured, but yes, you can select this option as well. So in total, there are, uh, what you can say four copies that you can create one and two are mandatory three and four are optional according to your requirement, totally depend upon your requirement. Now on the bottom guys, you can even see that the storage policy that has been used during the backup phase, that storage policy name is being shown over here. Now, this is about your uh, DR backups. DR backups will be written on one of the uh, location that you have defined. Okay. So this is guys like how you're going to configure the DR backup. Now, if you want to run the DR backup manually, you can right click on the comms of you can say all task and you can simply say disaster recovery backup. You can select whether you want to run a full backup or differential. You can even select the databases that you want to include inside the DR backup. These are the optional. There is a database with the name comms of COMMSRV that's mandatory. That's not even shown to you over as option, but these particular database you can select as an option. You can run full or differential. Uh, guys, remember that if you run the differential uh, uh, backups, make sure that the full backup is still available to uh, 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 make sure that uh, like to provide you the full uh ability to restore the data from the differential you can only restore or recover your comsub only if the full database uh, full backups uh dr backups are also available in this dr backup you can even include the client logs if you want to like if you want to include the logs from the client you can select the clients for which uh, you want to include the logs that can be also be done but that will increase your dr backup size remember that and you can simply click on OK. Now, once you click on OK in the job controller, you will see that uh, DR backup coming up. You can see that disaster recovery uh, backup coming up. Uh, export phase is known as the backup to disk phase as well now. So that you can, uh, it's one of the same thing, backup to disk or the DR backup. Now, since this one is running, I would like to show you all the locations. Like if I take you to, to the staging location, so if I take you to the content store comms of DR folder over here, we will see one DR backup should be new folder should be created. So it's 1512022. You can see that it's 9.33 AM. So 
you can see that 512022 a new dr backup has been created in the staging location so it will just keep one latest copy the old copies has been removed but again you have to make sure that you have the enough space available otherwise your dr backup over air will go to the pending state now you can see it reaches to 50% the face has been changed to backup face where the backup will be written to my dl1 library okay now uh, meanwhile if i want to show you uh, the uh, dr backup folder inside the dr backup folder you can see this particular dr backup that has been created set underscore zero three zero okay uh that has been created if i open that one you can see these are the files related to the dr backups lying over there coming to the console uh dr backup is about to get complete it reaches 200 percent so it got completed so your disaster recovery backup uh got completed so you need to make sure that all the spaces are available for your dr backup now guys uh i have shown you the location this location i have shown you the dr backup getting created over here on this location one i have shown you the dr backup on this comps of dr folder the staging location now the question is can i show you the dr backup written inside this dl1 disk library in this scenario so if i go to the dl1 disaster recovery uh, sorry uh, if i go to the libraries i know the dl1 is getting the space from the uh, c drive mp2 folder other one other mount path is offline and this is c drive mp2 folder so if i go inside the mp2 folder uh, this is there and if i open this one cv magnetic guys you can see that there are chunks written over there this is latest chunk which is there v underscore 19 it's on 15 1 19 13 i can assume right now the dr backup is written inside this particular folder according to the timing but if i double click on that one see the data is all together written in the form of chunks these are the chunks i cannot read the data from inside it i cannot read the data from inside it so i cannot read the dr backup from this particular library if I need to read the data from this particular DR library, I need to have a comsor. Okay. I need to have a comsor available. But guys, that is very tricky now. Why? Because I, I, I will require this particular DR backup when my comsor is not there. My comsor is gone. Right. It's not available. Then only I require a DR backup. See, I have a DR backup on this location. I can get the DR backup from there. But due to any XYZ reason, because if this location is not accessible, I need to get the DR backup from this particular disk library path or tape library, whatever it is. I will not be able to do that because the data is written in the form of chunk. It is not the flat files which I can read it. Ideally, the DR backup should be in the dump format like dot dmp form, uh, uh, format so if i show you on the location inside this particular d drive if i go uh just one minute if i go inside this dr backup location the files are written in the extension of dot dmp dot dmp dot dmp i require a dr backup to be in this format if i want to use it if i want to recover my comsor but inside my library the backups are always written in the form of chunks it's not in the dot DMP or something like this. So I need to extract the data from this particular library without the help of Comsoft. That can be done and that will be done through something called Media Explorer tool. We are going to discuss this one in the next to next video. I'm going to explain you what exactly the Media Explorer is and how you can extract the data using the Media Explorer from your library without the availability of your comms up. Okay. So guys, this is about your DR backups. Now in the next video, we are going to discuss how to use this particular DR backup, the .dmp file, which I have taken on this particular location, how to use those particular DR files to restore inside the SQL database, how I can restore those particular dumb backups into the SQL database on a new comms up. Okay. That's what we are going to discuss in the next video now just one more last thing about the dr backup dr backup schedules i told you that it's running at 10 a.m daily 
okay so in that case if you want to change the look uh, if you want to change the timing for your dr backup you can go to alta sorry you can go to view and you can go to schedules in the schedules you will see there is something called schedule name with the name dr backup okay so if you click on that one you will be able to see the dr backup is running at 10 am ideally this dr backup should be running every half an hour or every one hour or every two hour like you should have a frequency high frequency for this particular dr backup to minimize the data loss so i can say i want to repeat this dr backup every uh let's suppose uh, 40 minutes okay so every 40 minutes my dr backup will be repeated on that particular given day and i can say start time should be let's suppose 12 am from starting 12 a.m. until 11.59 p.m. every 14 minute DR backup should be created. Okay. So this way you can even modify the DR backup timing. I'm not doing it as of now. I will just cancel it. But yes, this is how you can modify the DR backups. So this is all about the DR backup guys. So my next video will be on the how to perform the restoration using these particular DR backups, how to recover your comms of that will be the next video guys. Thank you.